using the proposal as an excuse to close roads in the forest service territories? Yes, in the record of decision, which was just issued uh, four to six weeks ago, um, it, it is clearly indicated that the proposed listing of the yellow-legged frog was used alongside other criteria uh, to further restrict off-road vehicle access on 18 high country, high recreation uh, off-road trails. Thank you. Okay, well with that I want to thank uh, all of our witnesses uh, who have uh, come here today to offer their uh, testimony. Uh, uh, I want to thank the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for, for being here and listening to the community. And uh, with that, we will open the mics. Um, if you could uh, keep your, uh, we'll have, um, uh, who, who's got the microphone? Uh, Norman and Ross. Norman and Ross, uh, get their attention and uh, uh, try to keep it to one minute. All right. Thank you, uh, Honorable Congressman and Honorable Elective Officials and the professionals for having this meeting. And really thank the crowd for turning out because we are the citizens who've got to save this country. Uh, we will bury you in bureaucracy. That's a quote directly toward us from Khrushchev in Russia in the 50s. In the 60s and 70s, we had the hippie revolution going to save the earth became the ideal tool. Uh, the purpose of the left is to destroy and deny us our own economic to bureaucracy and strangling. We all want clean water and blue skies. America Creed is for growth, self-sufficiency, and free enterprise. Instead, we sit on trillions of dollars of natural resources, of energy, mining, timber and food that is blocked for us by the governmental bureaucracy. While we are in an economic decline, high unemployment, and a whole lost generation will never learn the work ethic. Wealth is only created by mining it, growing it, or changing its form for the purpose of people. The government is only takes to for redistribution for itself and for those who are non-producers to buy votes and it leaves very few of us left to produce. The communist world world our government will avoid war if they can weaken us militarily and break us economically as in the currency war currently underway. The frog issue is only part of the economic war to block our development. Biologists classify frogs as a beautiful group of a brain skeleton creature. As frogs migrate, they change to adapt to the climate by color and for camouflage or sexual attraction. Could, could, could you wrap up? We've got a lot of sense. If frogs, red frogs, can reproduce with yellow frogs, their gene difference does not warrant classification as endangered. No more than redheads and blondes are of homo species. And, <laughs> and we are the Thank you so much for this hearing and for being here. I'm from Nevada County and Placer County, and I'm from the Nevada County Tea Party. We implore your consideration of the important facts. The environment is in balance, and the frogs are numerous with a healthy ecosystem in place. My home is on Donner Summit, ground zero to a designated critical habitat. In the spring, when the snow thaws, there are literally thousands of frogs jumping across the road as the meadow drains out. They're not small in number, they're not at risk, they are numerous. Your science blames the fungus. It's a worldwide issue. We cannot mitigate it in the Sierra. If your Tahoe National Forest, Tina Marks, biologist, concludes that the habitat is widely recognized not to be a critical factor in the species decline, blaming the loss of the fungus and trout, why would you select such a large swath of the Sierra to be designated? This makes no sense to me. The ecosystem is working just like it is. Nature functions best when man does not interfere.
my uh, concern is why can't Congress have the final say on this rather than Ms. Pitts, who's already made up her mind? Well, Congress uh, passed the laws and then put the bureaucracy in charge. And now the Congress has to change the law. And the problem is that the law needs to be changed. Uh, and we've tried to change it. But you have to have 60 votes in the Senate and a, willing, a president willing to sign it. And there lies your problem. What, uh, a couple of other thoughts. Well, uh, I'll shortly be proposing a measure. I call it the count the damn hatchery fish bill. Uh, it, it is to respond specifically to the concerns that we just discussed on the Klamath. Uh, but I can also tell you this, I was in West Plains, Missouri to do a hearing of our subcommittee on water and power on Monday. Uh, in uh, uh, West Plains, they fought back a, uh, an attempt by the administration to designate 722 miles of the White River in Missouri and Arkansas as uh, a national blueway. Uh, uh, it was the same kind of, um, same kind of, uh, of, of, of railroad uh, that got it designated. Uh, the people in those regions uh, stood up, said uh, uh, absolutely not, uh, and uh, ultimately forced the Department of the Interior to back off. So there, there is some hope in that respect. Next comments over here. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, hosting this event. I'm with Inyo County. I'm the planning director. And we were very, very concerned about this proposal. It has the potential to completely devastate our economy, which is recreation-based. Uh, and the proposed critical habitat uh, really looks like it was selected to uh, inflict the most damage that it possibly uh, could. Um, we do believe that mit mitigation can uh, take care of these species. Uh, we believe that there's been good progress made already. And uh, uh, this overreaching proposal um, will really uh, impact us. So we're very concerned and uh, we really uh, want to uh, urge the service to reconsider the proposal. Thank you. Hi, I'd like to know um, when they introduced the pipe in Lake Davis, California, and they had to poison the whole lake, and that was their water uh, drinking system. Um, however, the pipe started getting into the waterways. What were they supposed to do as far as the forest circus then? State news regarding the introduction of pike into Lake Davis. Pike. We'll, we'll take that as a rhetorical question. Then. Okay, next comment. Um, over uh, 200,000 acres in Tuolumne County alone are within the forest, are bare of vegetation. These areas are ideal for solar panels to be put to generate people power for our people. The, uh, these may be in the areas of critical habitat for the, the, the species that we're talking about, but the, salt, the lack of these tabletop areas will cost jobs in the future and restrict the, the in, energy independence in the United States and California in particular. Thank you. I had a clarification question. Um, it seemed that the decision uh, as to what to do about all this land is based on the biological impact. What I want to know is, because I wasn't clear, after you get the information about what the economic impact is to the area, how much weight does that have, if any? So that's a, that's a really good question. And um, the listing of the species itself, so the actual listing of whether it's endangered or threatened is a biological determination. 
critical habitat, um, identifying those areas that are critical for the species, has both a biological and an economic component to it. So once we release the draft economic analysis, we will hopefully get comments about that um, and incorporate those comments, respond to those comments, and if the decision is to list the species and we designate critical habitat along with that listing, that information will go into determining what critical habitat is. Does that help? Okay. Thanks. Comment. Hello. Uh, I think we are getting ahead of ourselves here. You normally, uh, if you want to solve a problem, you go to a source and you find the source. And the source in this problem, as I understand it, has to do with when the uh, treaty was proposed in 1994, I believe it was, and then brought to the Senate, and they refused to sign it because of the implications of all these environmental things. So instead, the president and his cohorts put together the same sort of a thing that we've got now, with executive orders. So I'm not so sure that, that that law that everybody talks about is actually a law. I think it's nothing more than executive orders that that the Congress, of course we do have the problem with the Senate, uh, could look into that and see if there isn't a way we can change things so we can get away from this so-called law that I don't think is a law. Thank you. Well, the, the Endangered Species Act is a law. One of the big questions, however, is whether that law is being appropriately applied uh, in this instance. In fact, in many of the instances now involving critical habitat designations because of all the flaws in the so-called science uh, that are now being revealed. And again, we just had a hearing this past week, uh, Tuesday, I believe, uh, on that subject. And the, the testimony was devastating to, to uh, uh, the effect that these appear to be mainly conclusion-driven uh, a, a process rather than a fact-driven process. And, and, and that's the big issue. Thank you, Mr. McClintock. Uh, I was wondering why we even have an Endangered Species Act at this point. Isn't it outdated when they can develop a woolly mammoth in a scientific setting? Now why can't they make all the, all the yellow frogs also that they want? And they can carry them around their neck if they want. <laughs> Yes, I'm Rob Gorham. I own and operate 49er Mining Supplies here locally in Columbia, California. I've been affected both commercially on a mining level and also on a sales level throughout this state. I've had to take my mining out of this state due to the regulatory commissions. We taught people how to mine and do things properly. Where I'm going with this, you guys are talking about being ranchers, cattlemen. We tried pulling everybody together because they stopped our livelihood, point blank. If you don't band together, that's why I'm here for you all now. I also own land here in Columbia. Listen, you need to reach out to your bikers, ATVers. It doesn't matter, forget any bad blood. Yeah, it's the end of the year. You know, forgive all and band together because Miss Pitts, I've had to fire or let go of people in my store. I'm fighting to keep my right of my home. Do you have to do that if your job disappears? Thank you. Hi, I'm Megan. I was born and raised in Tolomey County and I'm here to let you all know that I support the listing of these amphibian species. I think that the Fish and Wildlife Service is doing the right thing in listing them and that they are relying upon the best available science. I understand that there is some question to that. Um, and I also just wanted to say, as someone as part of your district, you know, I would have really appreciated to see a little more balance in your um, 
witnesses here. I think that having Ms. Kiss up here by herself is very intimidating and I don't think that it provides a balanced perspective to those of us who made the effort to come out here to this hearing. Thank you. Let me just point out that the whole purpose of this hearing is for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to hear from the communities. As you've heard, every one of the communities that has taken a position on this is in opposition. Uh, uh, at the request of the Fish and Wildlife Service, we gave them an extra five minutes uh, so they could have a ten-minute presentation. But the purpose of this, and for which I'm grateful to the Fish and Wildlife Service, is for them to hear from the communities whose elected officials are in unanimous opposition uh, to this uh, measure according to their votes that have been cast so far. Uh, in the next comment from Mr. Um, I'm here from Mono County. I'm representing the Mono County Board of Supervisors. And like our neighboring county to the south, Inyo County, who spoke a little bit earlier, we are also very concerned about the potential impacts of this proposal to our local communities. Uh, in particular, our economy is based largely on recreation and tourism, and any restrictions that may impact those types of activities could have significant effects on our local economies. Um, and we are taking our time to continue to research this issue, and we'll be submitting a full set of comments in November, and so we would like to thank you also for the extension of the comment period into November. Um, I think the fact that the two counties from the Eastern Sierra, Inyo and Mono County, are both here today, have come across okay. the passes, braved the fires in the Sierra to come to this meeting, um, it represents our concern and also the fact that we are an often forgotten side of California, and this the impact of these proposals could have significant impacts to us as well, and we would like to request that there be public outreach, a public hearing, or public presentations to the folks on the eastern side as full public engagement is warranted on this issue. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Matt Reno. I'm this, the biologist for Sierra Pacific Industries in this district. And I have a question for Ms. Pitts. What is the possibility of actively managing a recovery of these, these species prior to the listing of, of these species? Can we actively manage them in a way where the public can step up and care for our environment like I believe that they have the ability to do before the regulations come? Um, I, am, I am not a herpetologist, so I don't, I don't um, have a lot of information about how, how specifically you would actively manage, but I understand that we are working closely with Forest Service and with the Park Service on conserving um, all of these species. Okay. Sure. Excuse me. One, there's a way of managing for these species that has been documented by Vance Frendenberg that he, he proved that removing a fish population can actually increase the population of Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frogs. So, can we do more of that prior to the regulation? So, what I understand is that some of that is being done. There are experiments being done now. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, and I can, we can get back to you if you get your name to us. Um, we've got Fish and Wildlife Service people here. If you would give your name and, and contact info, we can get back to you on what the status of that is. My name is Nancy Matrosi. I'm from Adair County. It took me two hours to get here, a day off from work, and hours and hours to study this. I would like to know, Ms. Pitts, who is doing economic analysis for this plan for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service? What is the number of studies that will be done per county on the economic analysis for the 17 counties that is affected by this proposal? How will the economic studies plan be developed? Do we, the community, have input on economic studies? 
that, and how they are developed. Because quite frankly, I'm kind of concerned about the people who are doing it. So um, we do, we are a biological organization, we're not an economic um, agency. So we do contract out um, the economic, I don't have that information here, but if you, again, if you're willing to uh, share your contact info with us, we will get back to you on that information. So why wouldn't you know who the contract is that's doing these economic studies? If you are the assistant director. I don't, I don't have that information right now, I'm sorry. Um, my background, I um, uh, am a botanist and forester. Uh, and if I could just interrupt here, uh, as I said earlier, we're debating the policy, not the people. So uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Pitts is here as an honest broker to listen to the community, and uh, we need to respect that. No, I understand that, and I, um, I again, if you are willing to um, share your information, we will get back to you on, on who the who the contractor is. And um, the other piece I think was part of your question was, um, what do they use to develop these? There are, um, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get a big reaction here. Uh, there are government standards um, for economic analyses, and those are used to uh, develop the, the economic um, uh, draft plan. So, Ms. Pitts, if I may, I think the takeaway here is that the overwhelming majority of people in this room have taken a day off from their labors to be here. And the reason they've done so is because they sense from, from of, of the experience of other communities, from the experience of their own communities, that the economic impact of these decisions is overwhelming to the point where human beings are now becoming an endangered species. They are migrating out of the Sierra Nevadas because of these policies, and the economic impact is of utmost importance to them and utmost importance to the questions that, that are being addressed. Understood, sir. Uh, back here on your right. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm a supervisor in Edo, Amador County, and I know four out of five are supervisors are here today and one could not make it. Um, I know I view this with great um, trepidation because I went through the Spotted Owl uh, listing, um, Northern California, and it came into our county in, in some phases. And what you see is, I know we used to have a number of mills around our county. There was George Pacific Mill. There was a Cedar Mill, Cow Mills, whatever you called it. You had Wetzel Oviet. You had over in Camille, Michigan Cow Mill. They're all gone. It was a big hit on our um, economic um, livelihood. And now that it's come to do the same things, it's going to have no effect. I think one thing should be done, they should do a study on what the effects of spotted owl listings were on California. Um, rather than saying, well, we, we're purporting this will happen, look back and see what happened on listing. Um, also, uh, what I find rather silly is they're just saying no species will ever go extinct. Just putting the cards on the table, how do we kill a dinosaurs? Things change, always have changed. What I'm hearing from this hearing is the humans are not the factor. It's a BD disease and the trout seem to be the main factor. So what they're going to do. And the trout seem to be the main factor. So what they're going to do is they're going to punish us, take away our rights and our freedoms and our privileges for, for nothing. Um, our CEO sent in a letter expressing our concerns over this listing. I'm sure our board will be weighing in further. Um, personally, I'm completely opposed to it. Thank you. I'm Steve Eckert. I'm president of the California Association of Four Wheel Drive Clubs. And we've been advocating for re re recreation for over 50 years, along with uh, conservation and education measures in the forest. Uh, currently, the forests, and it was mentioned earlier, are managing to minimize the impacts for that. So they are doing it like that. There are the regulations are already there. They do that in the forests that I recreate in, and also uh, a lot of you have mentioned travel management. We made hundreds of comments as a uh, uh, the public, our users, our organizations, the. Uh, 
agencies are very good at ignoring our comments. So don't have a lot of hope for that. They still have to be done, that we're in the business of making comments, but uh, the agencies are also very good at ignoring them. That's their business. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dave Pickett, Amador County taxpayer. Um, this is directed to, to Ms. Pitts. Uh, early in your uh, opening monologue, you indicated that the uh, United States Fish and Wildlife Service is not authorized to combat the fungus or the trout or as an agency to protect. Reviewing the documents so far, I see no reference whatsoever to any other agency that could give members of the public an opportunity to ask which agencies can be authorized to protect us as the taxpayer and the environment. Thank you. Good afternoon, Congressman McClintock, uh, Justin Oldfield with the California Cattlemen's Association. I'm over here on this side. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you from the association for, uh, for putting on this, uh, this hearing. Uh, this is a big issue and we work a lot on uh, representing our members and ranchers on ESA listings and they certainly have a huge impact uh, not only in our use of the land but also on the livelihoods of our members. And I guess I want to say uh, really two things. One, uh, I've worked for the association now for seven years and I can say what's most troubling about this proposed listing uh, is the, the flagrant, flagrant disregard of the, uh, the science that was recently conducted by the Forest Service in UC Davis. Uh, you know, we hear from folks in this area, uh, area primarily from environmental groups, uh, you know, they dislike a lot of the research that comes out of our universities. This research is peer-reviewed science, uh, and for the fact that it hasn't been included and the fact it's being challenged by the agency, um, it is really disconcerting in the long run. And uh, we're very concerned that this sort of uh, approach to listings will continue on in the future. Uh, and so we want to see a, a very detailed response from the Fish and Wildlife Service uh, uh, of why they don't think this study should be included. Um, you know, we've done managed grazing uh, on the Stanislaus National Forest for Yosemite Toad for a long time. This is not something that's going to come into effect. This is something that's already been in place and we're not seeing the impact from livestock. And it seems that because the conclusions of this study were not in the, uh, uh, certainly did not provide the results uh, that people uh, wanted to see, uh, that it just was uh, excluded and critiqued. And, and that's very troubling for us. The other thing that I would uh, uh, also wanted to mention too is uh, someone on the panel brought up the Environmental uh, uh, Equal Access to Justice Act. And in many cases we find um, agencies making determinations so that they can best defend themselves in court, not making determinations that are actually based on good science and sound logic. And we need to make sure that, uh, I know we've, we've, we've worked with efforts in, in Congress to try to reform uh, EJA, but over the past 20 years, it's been documented that groups who have access to EJA have spent over nearly $20 billion of federal taxpayer dollars uh, in suing the federal government over these issues. And uh, this has been one part of the largest jobs programs for these organizations. Now we, of course, as an association and our members uh, cannot access those funds. And so we're left to, uh, to take those up on our own. So thank, thank you very much. You. Thank you. I'm John Reinhardt. I'm in reference here to the mining rights of miners that have been taken away by the Fish and Game and the uh, Forest Department and the City of California legislators. They have passed all these laws where we can't even mine our claims anymore that the federal government's given us. You know, they be on this charge in the state of what, $120 for every 20 acres we have a mine claim, we have to pay state taxes on it. If they will not let us go in there and do any suction dredging or any beneficial mining that we can do to get the gold out of the ground. Why do we have the mining claim if we can't do it? Why are we paying all these fees? They've written all these laws to benefit the amount of minerals and not enough to do the miners. They, they're, every time they have a we mean, we seem to be just pushed aside. Me and my son are right now fighting to the California on this because fish and game side of us for mining on our claim. And the state of now is trying to bankrupt us because uh, we don't have the funds they have. <laughs> we can't fight the state with the money they've got. But uh, Congress needs to step in and look at the 1870 Mining Act and all the other ones that give the miners rights that the state says we don't have. And fishing game is not the blame of that state, they're just enforcing what the state is issued. 
And all of a sudden, recently, I got another thing from the sports department that says now we've got to go up and clean the garbage at home. You know, the fishermen and the campers and everybody else, we don't have to claim what we get fine. Why do we have to be trash collectors now? Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. First of all, uh, I want to thank all the people that are here taking the time to be here. Congressman McClintock, thank you for your time. Um, I'm Jim Maddox. I'm a retired biologist. been here for uh, 43 years, worked for Fish and Game for quite a number of them. Um, and if anything, maybe I'll, I can start by kind of muddying the water a little bit. I'm kind of concerned, uh, to say the least, I'm a bit perplexed about the frog toad issue. I believe the rainbow trout, uh, Yosemite toad, and mountain yellow-legged frogs evolved in the same environment. I'm also convinced that the same evolutionary pattern regarding the foothill yellow-legged frogs. Um, I realized that uh, fish and game muddied the water for years by stocking fish, uh, fish raised in hatcheries, not necessarily genetically the ones that were in the high country, but you know that having been said, early on, Studies to determine the extent of the frog toad population declines and to find solutions. Uh, trout was implicated. Don't hold it in front of me, please. Uh, implicated is a major factor leading to that decline. It seems illogical to assume that uh, that uh, uh, just in the last hundred years, trout have become an issue. That's what I was trying to say there. Um, for whatever reason, it was presumed that, back off, uh, presumed that trout were, were non-native to much of the frog toad range. Obviously, brown and brook trout are non-native. It's well documented. I don't have any quarrel with that. However, I'm not convinced the rainbow trout are non-native uh, to our high country and West Slope Sierra and streams. I believe the golden trout and cutthroat trout are considered high country residents, so why the rainbow trout aren't? Uh, that's a question. Uh, of course, trout bones are not found in the middens of Native American occupation as their bones are very fragile and the acidic soils. So I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to yes. wrap up, but okay. try to get as many people as possible. All right, well, uh, if, if you have something in writing, if you'll submit that I, to us, I want to make that Congressman, I, I will do that. I'm probably going to have to go home because I found a, a, an errata I need to change, but if I can get an address, I will send sure. it to you. Um, in in short, I feel that there's a whole lot of different issues that have been pointed out, uh, including global warming, pesticides, acid rain, and fun fungal disease, as well as trout. And I just really have a, uh, I have a concern about throwing a, casting a big net around something and, and trying to solve the problem. And I think a lot of the people have gotten to the heart of the issue by saying, why don't we identify how we can solve the problem and then go to doing problem solving. And, and, and thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I would like to know why there's uh, no way to take any endangered species off the list. We've had many problems. The problems have been corrected, and still we have meadows fenced in, and I would like to know why we can't take them off. Uh, I might add that was an issue brought up at the uh, House hearing this past week that I've, I've referenced. We're, we're going to make these the last two questions, and we're running out of time for the rental. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much, Congressman McClintock, for the hearing. Uh, I'm the Managing Director of the California Off-Road Vehicle Association. So the off-roaders and ATVers are here, and we support all of you because we've been through this for many, many years. You asked a question earlier about how much land is available. Um, Pacific Southwest Research Station, an arm of the Forest Service, did a study to understand how much of land was available to them to manage fire. And they came to a conclusion that only 25% of the 75% of land that they manage in California is available to mechanized means of fire suppression. That means every other land is either wilderness, wilderness study area, inventory roadless area. Uh, it can also be part of a national monument. So it's off limits to people. What hasn't been looked at in this is that there is already 14.1 million acres of wilderness in California. We can call that an experiment into 
frog designated habitat along with that 75% land that is unavailable for public use. If that hasn't improved frog habitat, why would designating another 2 million acres of land improve frog, frog habitat? There is already no human use in the majority of that land, and that's millions upon millions and millions of acres. The Fish and Wildlife Service does not have to designate additional habitat. They can take that land that's already designated as wilderness and designate that for potential frog habitat. There's no reason why not. Thank you, Congresswoman, for all your hard work. Uh, I would like to agree. My, my name, sorry, my name is Keith Murray from Eldorado County. I'm a retired biologist. Uh, I would like to agree. My, my name, sorry, my name is Keith Murray from Eldorado County. I'm a retired biologist. And to begin with, I agree with the gentleman from uh, Fish and Game. 100% in what he said. A couple of other addendums to that is that uh, when these specific species are listed or proposed to be listed as endangered, it seems to me to be uh, more prudent that if we spent time mitigating I issues and looked at test cases and test samples or plots to see ways which we might be able to improve uh, the survival of these animals, we'd be much better off. And I think there's another underlying issue that hasn't even brought, been brought up today that comes from a national point of view and a political point of view, and that is that there's a major interest in rewilding a good part of the United States and a good porting a quarter from Mexico to the Canadian border. And much of this is used by uh, politicians to deal with environmental issues because who can be against the environment? And many of these issues concerning the spotted frog, I mean, sorry, the spotted owl, uh, fishers and martins, uh, we're looking at frogs and toads now, and what next, without really good science to really establish that. And to point just three things that might indicate that maybe there's an underlying motive here, is that there have been three issues and series of road closures in El Dorado County over the last 15 years each one taking more of the land out of the use of the public. The, all of the issues concerning the impact of the, of the frogs and toads and the other species, this eliminates people from the forest. Uh, the idea of the cars can only go one car length off the road was supposed to have been removed by the judge when the uh, court order was lifted on road closures. It never was. It was left there intact. And it's a major handicap for access into the forest. And the last uh, issue is that uh, recently in El Dorado County, our sheriff, uh, rightfully so in my opinion, uh, stopped the federal law enforcement people from enforcing anymore in the, in the forest and in the area of private lands. And this was done because of a, a long history of harassment of the public in the national forest telling people uh, guests into our forest they can't shoot they can't trespass here they can't do this uh, and ridiculous issues of uh, enforcement and it's driving people out of the forest and i believe this is on in, on purpose thank you um, But before we conclude, I just want to get as clear an estimate as possible of the sentiment of the uh, public assembled here. If we were to vote right now, I'll just put it to you as a vote. Those in favor of U.S. Forest Service plan, please rise. Oh, pardon me, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service plan, please rise. Okay. Uh, those, uh, thank you. Uh, those opposed, please rise. Okay. Great. Thank you. I want to assure you. I want to assure you we're going to uh, uh, get a transcript of today's meeting uh, submitted to the Natural Resources Committee that is looking at these uh, issues and looking at the broader question of conclusion-driven, uh, 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 conc the conclusion-driven process by which these habitats are designated. 
Uh, if this proposal uh, proceeds, I think that the House of Representatives will be taking an increasing interest in the process within the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, and your participation in this meeting has been a huge help in building the public record and building the case on these issues. So I thank all of you for attending, uh, and again, I can, I can tell you the crowd that I see before me today is very similar to the crowd I saw in West Plains, Missouri on Monday. They stood up, they spoke out, and they succeeded. And uh, hopefully that will be the, uh, the ultimate uh, conclusion of this process. Thank you all very much. And by the way, I'll hang around. If, oh, oh, two other things. Two other things. Number one, I will hang around if you if you want to talk. And second, we have written forms. If you if you've got something to add, please use the written forms submitted to uh, to one of our staff members, uh, and we will get that in the record as well. Thank you all. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now back to Amador This Week.